Welcome to the Rebound Las Vegas, our ongoing series designed to get you back to work and back in business. I'm Trisha Keen. We'll spend the next 30 minutes showcasing hot jobs, talking about ways to keep your family safe, and we'll also look at ways to manage that stress so many are feeling. Here are this week's stories. Anxiety, stress, fatigue, you might be feeling the impact of the pandemic on your mental health. 13 Action News anchor Trisha Keen shows you a 3,000 year old technique a local doctor is using to help patients manage the pressure. It's actually deeply relaxing. Um, probably 75% of the time people fall asleep getting acupuncture. Dr. Rachel Cole says they specialize in treating pain at Integrative Acupuncture on Fort Apache near Russell Road. But lately, more and more patients are complaining about high levels of anxiety. We are, tend to be adding things to the protocols when we're treating people's neck pain and back pain to help with the anxiety that people have been dealing with. Dr. Cole says acupuncture helps because of its effect on the nervous system. Some of the same mechanisms that help us to relieve pain also help to relieve people's anxiety. Dr. Cole says acupuncture specifically treats the part of the nervous system that helps with sleep and even digestion. It's a whole body system, so it, it does tend to work on all kinds of things like anxiety, allergies. I mean, there, there's a whole list of things. That list also includes relief for menstrual cramps and PMS, migraines, strokes, and the side effects of chemotherapy. As a fourth generation Las Vegan, Dr. Cole says it's fulfilling to serve her community and help those hit especially hard during the pandemic. A lot of people working on the strip, you know, lost their jobs and so it's super stressful and um, so that's starting to change. A lot of people are getting back to work and just feeling like Las Vegas is coming back and it's nice to be able to see that on our end. For 13 Action News, I'm Trisha Keen. Oh, what a year and a few months it's been. For some, this pandemic will be nothing more than a memory, a historic time that they live through. For others, it's a time that pushed them and their families to the brink of physical and financial collapse. It's been an emotional roller coaster. I don't want to tell my kids we're going to have to live in a van, but it's nerve wracking. Not just for the people who needed a job to pay the rent, but for the landlord who needed that rent money to pay back a loan. It's cheaper for us to live than supporting this other family in our other house. The state, local counties and cities have each been through different iterations of eviction moratoriums and rent relief programs. The most recent coming last week. Just as time was about to run out on the state's efforts, lawmakers cut a deal to extend California's eviction moratorium and rent relief. Anybody that has been impacted by COVID that owes rent going back to last April, not just this April, last April, we will pay 100% of that rent We'll also pay that rent 100% of it going forward uh, through September. According to the National Equity Atlas, about 758,000 households in the state are behind on rent. The NEA's research says that equals about three and a half billion dollars. On a smaller level, the average families are behind on their rent is about $4,700. The bottom line is this is to support struggling Californians, whether they be small mom and pop landlords, which is the percentage of landlords or the tenants who are struggling and want to make sure they've got some stability. Senate Pro Tem Tony Atkins was instrumental in getting the rent relief program done. She says it allows tenants to access rental funds directly if their landlord chooses not to participate. It also makes sure landlords can get money even if their otherwise income qualified tenants have already vacated a unit. I think there were people that still and there may still be people that don't know they're eligible for this and that there are protections in place for both the landlord and the tenant. For some landlords, an extension is not what they were looking for. Many landlords have not received any rent since March of last year. Deborah Carlton is with the California Apartment Association. She says most landlords have five units or less, meaning non-payments could impact their ability to stay afloat. In some cases, they've dealt with tenants who couldn't pay and didn't, taking advantage of the situation. The new law will add some protections for landlords. Now what we're going to find out very soon is as landlords apply for funding, if tenants don't apply, we know that they probably don't qualify and or they will apply and the state or local government's going to tell them you don't qualify. Adam Rakusin, KSBY News. 
618 now, like so many other businesses, Las Vegas tattoo shops were also forced to close during the pandemic. One shop owner admits it was a really scary time. But he tells 13 Action News anchor Trisha Keen business is buzzing again. Pre pandemic, people were pouring into Revolt Tattoos inside the Fashion Show Mall on Las Vegas Boulevard in Spring Mountain. We opened on Black Friday right before the pandemic, so we were crazy busy for the first three months. But tattoo artist Joey Hamilton says COVID-19 brought everything to a halt. As a business owner, it was probably one of the most stressful parts of my whole career of 20 years in this business. Joey says they had to contact hundreds of clients around the world to reschedule appointments. Fortunately, he says his team was ready to handle new guidelines once they reopened. A lot of things they were telling us to do or implement, we were already doing. The only addition really was the, it was the masks, which, you know, it made everybody feel safe and, and uh, you know, we're already socially distanced anyways. Business is making a comeback and Joey says so is Las Vegas. I feel like that the community is opening back up. You know, Resort World just opened up across the street. That's going to be huge for us, for this whole community. And it's the Vegas community Joey says he's truly thankful for. I really feel like, you know, hands down, this spot, this place, this city has embraced us. Joey has worked at other Vegas shops and his first business was near UNLV. But now with this location at Fashion Show and another at Meadows Mall, Joey says Vegas will always be home. We will expand, you know, on mostly probably West Coast, but who knows? But uh, yes, Vegas is our home. My baby is Vegas born for sure. For 13 Action News, I'm Trisha Keen. When it comes to returning to working at the office as opposed to working from home, a few things come to mind, like a commute. Then for many, there's childcare costs plus logistics, as well as the potential for workplace distractions. Now, getting ahead of those things, I'm told, is the solution. Any job, whether you're home or not, you're going to have burnout with it to some degree. Um, but you never realize until you were able to work remotely um, how much that burnout had happened and you didn't realize it. Connie Schaefer tells me working from home during the pandemic has freed up time and removed stress. What has been so great is that, of course, I'm here anytime my kids need me. Now, today, she's headed back to the office in the area of medical billing, but her job is allowing her to have a hybrid schedule. I'm going back two days a week. Right now, um, there's other people who are working a week at a time. It's that flexibility and attentiveness to employees' needs that Dr. Angela Hall, a human resources expert at Michigan State University, says could make the difference in preventing employee burnout, as well as employees needing to communicate. They can't be afraid to ask for help and to take um, advantage of resources that the employer will have and she says employees should not be afraid to negotiate with their employers on what works best for themselves and help prevent the symptoms of burnout. Mentally disengaged, productivity going down, um, the quality or quantity of work being diminished. And studies have shown that the best ways that employers can support their employees with respect to um, burnout or on two levels, individually, like approaching the, the employees, doing check-ins, observing them, seeing how they're doing, but also in an organizational or systemic type of way. Paul says, for example, having an inclusive and supportive culture, one that allows employees to speak up. The people I work for are really good. So um, I'm, I've been very lucky in that aspect. You may also have employees who became burned out while working during the pandemic. The same advice applies for employees and employers in the way of communication and attentiveness. I'm Darren Cunningham reporting from Canton. Look, welcome back to the Rebound Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories that you're watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash rebound. What we learned was God said, you know what, if, if the government shuts your church down, I'm good with that. And I think one of the things he accomplished was to show the churches how weak they were. A wake up call. And, and what work they have to do. I don't know anybody that likes what's going on. 
already streaming Sunday services, Pastor Miles McPherson says his church was better prepared than most. The numbers online are going through the roof. I mean, our numbers online have gone a hundred times, 200 times. Churches need to be flexible to be relevant. Able to reach people worldwide, he says it's a powerful tool. Now, People do need people. I mean, if people, all they're going to do is consume online. It's very limited of what they could do. And so eventually you want them going somewhere. While in-person attendance is starting to rebound, polls show it's still far from normal. And church membership has been declining for decades. I don't affiliate formally with any of these religious beliefs, even though I guess I am sort of culturally Christian. Columnist and author Jill Filipovich has researched changing religious preferences and authored a book about millennials. She says many are leaving organized religion and not coming back. Part of a growing trend, religious nuns are made up of atheists, agnostics, those with no organized religion, and the spiritual. It's such a key part of the human condition to want to understand, you know, why am I here? What is my purpose? Some religious leaders worry the drop in attendance will outlive the pandemic. Gallup began asking Americans this question in 1937. Church membership was at 73 percent. It remained around 70 percent for the next six decades before a steady decline around the turn of the 21st century, dropping below 50 percent for the first time in 2020. That hasn't been my experience. Uh, our experience is that we have more and more people wanting to get involved. With closures expected to accelerate, his congregation could serve as a model for what's working. Churches that are engaged in the community that are addressing social issues that have a cause behind them other than come listen to me speak and give us money. He says attracting new members goes beyond the lights and live music. I went from doing cocaine, smoking weed, hanging out, being in the NFL to I'm reading the Bible. That's what I share about is how relevant the gospel is to your life, no matter what you're going through. And while they want people back in church physically, they're embracing new ways of reaching people. So it can help them wherever they are. In San Diego, I'm Amanda Brandeis. Welcome back to The Rebound Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories that you're watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash rebound. Well, this heat in the valley has a lot of people screaming for ice cream, and that is bringing a much-needed boost to local ice cream shops. 13 Action News reporter Jeremy Chen spoke with a manager at a shop in Chinatown about rebounding with its summer sales. There's probably no better thing to do to avoid the blistering temperatures than to grab some ice cream. And here at Cafe Maiko, they've been seeing a lot more people come in to grab a frozen treat, and they hope that trend continues. There's a lot of humming from the soft serve machine as workers churn out more cones. Customers wanting to get their fill of matcha ice cream. It's our favorite. And with these new flavors? Yeah. It's the signature item at Cafe Maiko in Chinatown. Many people coming to get some relief from the blistering triple digit heat. This plus the AC really does it. Air conditioning manager Hong Wong is proud to offer to his customers. A year ago, it was strictly curbside and takeout as Wong was focused on having his business survive. The business was hit and miss, you know, but then it was enough to pay the rent, so we were happy. Now he'll be able to pay more than just wages as the summer heat has brought more people inside with sales of ice cream rising. Probably about like 10 or 20 percent more than usual. The National Dairy Association says July is the busiest time for ice cream producers. Wong says successful summer sales provide a nest egg for him and his staff that didn't exist last year to get through slower months of the year. It's a prime summer and then winter is approaching you know, before you know it. So I just hope that everything will stay stabilized. A winter where Wong will be more at ease and looking towards the future. Summer month is our busiest month. That's our prime time. So uh, this is the time that we actually make our money and our reserve to get through the winter. The manager says he's looking at perhaps introducing some new concepts to keep the customers coming in, especially during the slower winter months. Jeremy Chen, 13 Action News. So many teens around the country are now looking for summer jobs as the economy starts to bounce back from the pandemic. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details on who's hiring and how to make your application stand out. For many teens like Sarah Bacall, last summer was a bit of a bust. Days before starting her first job as a camp counselor, the whole thing was called off. I was so bummed when they canceled it from COVID. 
From summer camps to restaurants to hotels, the service industry was one of the hardest hit during the pandemic, with the leisure and hospitality unemployment rate reaching a high of more than 39 percent last year. But that's all changing now, and teens are some of the best positioned to take advantage of the reopenings. The jump in employment that we are seeing right now among teenagers is unprecedented. The recovery is taking place in the industries that hire the most teens, food and beverage and retail. One of the biggest assets teens bring to the table, flexible hours. Many businesses still hiring for seasonal work. We're also seeing the growth in employment because the recovery is taking place at a time when teens typically leave school and enter the labor force. And last, small businesses are still cash strapped and teenagers offer an option of lower wages. To snag one of the millions of summer jobs available right now, experts recommend reapplying to places that might have fallen through last summer. Sarah did and starts training at the end of next month. I'm going to be running the waterfront and boating, so I'm in charge of teaching uh, the girls how to canoe and the waterfront safety skills. And get comfortable casting a wide net. With remote work acceptable, you might even be able to get a job in a different city without ever having to travel there. When teenagers are thinking about the different jobs that they might take this summer, they can get creative and expand their choice set because they have the power right now. Look, welcome back to The Rebound Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories that you're watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash rebound. Learning was an eye-opening experience for a lot of parents. Some kids thrived while others suffered outside of the classroom. One local expert says it's likely not your child's fault. 13 Action News anchor Trisha Keen looks at the science behind how your child learns. The online learning thing was like new and like it it's just weird. Like so many other Las Vegas kids, 10-year-old Range couldn't wait to go back to school. It wasn't as hard for me. Like, I, I just got it like that. His 13-year-old brother, Connor, on the other hand, didn't mind the virtual learning. Their mom admits they have a different approach, but she had help in setting them up for success. What the Colby offers is that you get to know who your, who your kid is and then choose the right learning environments and pathways for them, not just what the script has written for how education is supposed to be. The Colby Index measures a person's instincts and how they act on those instincts, explains Gail Swift, a Colby certified consultant. Instincts on their own are a subconscious force. They're just sitting there. However, when you ignite them or when you test to figure out how someone strives, and takes action, it puts you into a state of having to decide what to do. Swift says that's where she comes in. By testing a child and learning how their subconscious works, she's able to help them understand their personal process for learning. I help kids solve problems, their own problems. They're capable of learning. They're born to learn. And so sometimes in school environments, kids are told how to learn. That's the problem, according to Swift. Many students don't naturally learn the way their teachers teach. Most teachers, generally speaking, about 70-75% of the teachers work a certain way. And if you have a student that doesn't work that way, there could be a lot of tension. Swift says your instincts don't change. So the earlier a child is tested, the sooner they set themselves on a path to success. They start making decisions for themselves. They start dealing with their own consequences. They start taking responsibility for themselves. Swift will test kids as young as three years old, but she has a warning. Allowing your child to make responsible decisions means allowing them to also fail. That's what the parent isn't used to, is allowing that to happen in some capacity, you can imagine. That's the hard part for parents. But Lisa says it works. Range and Connor are making big improvements at school. Best of all, they have real ideas about their future. The Colby connects what your strengths are to career paths. It's like a magic, like a magical thing to say, this is the kind of career that you'd be good at. But Swift points out test results will help right away. So if you are fighting with reading time or picking up everything in the room and everything have a place, if you have a last minute child, or if you have one that constantly needs to be outside and you think doesn't focus, those are the people that I like to work with. Bring them on. For 13 Action News, I'm Trisha Keen.
Thanks for watching The Rebound Las Vegas on your favorite streaming device. If you missed any part of this week's program, just hit the back button on your remote and scroll down until you see The Rebound, and you'll find every segment we aired in this episode. Stay tuned for more from 13 Action News after the break, and check us out anytime here on KTMV Streaming, Las Vegas News on your time.